The nightmare just won't end, will it? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. And when you enter promo code locked on MLB, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. With me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granato. Steve, what's good? Is anything good? <laughs> Is anything good? Well, uh, man, that's a question. Hey, we have a preview. I know that's going to be good. I know the <laughs> show's going to be good. I, I can guarantee you that much. Uh, yeah, we have a preview of tonight's game, game two, of course, in the Bronx against the White Sox. We'll talk about that coming up a little bit later. Of course, we'll also talk about last night's near no hitter. Uh, of course, the loss three to two to the White Sox. So first, of course, the big news of the day, the evening coming out after the game. Pretty much, well, it's not as bad as it could have been, Stace, right. but here is the news. This is coming from multiple reporters. We just took in one tweet here from Brendan Cuddy of The Athletic. Aaron Judge has a bruise and a strain of a ligament in his right big toe will go on the injured list. As of this record, we don't know how long of a stint. Is that going to be 7, 10, 15, 100 million, 60, whatever it's going to be? <laughs> uh, it's not going to be any of those. Stacy, uh, he ended up getting a cortisone shot as well. Obviously hasn't played since the collision in Los Angeles. Your reaction to this terrible news? I mean, I guess it's good. It's not a break, you know? Um, not that a strain of a ligament is a good thing either, because those are tricky too. I mean, if it was just a bruise, I wouldn't mind, but the strain of the ligament kind of scares me. And he's a big dude, so that's a big right toe. It's not a normal right toe. It's a big right toe, so... Yeah, that's, gosh, that's just awful. I mean, what a great play he made, but, you know, you could see it when his foot hit. You thought, oh, God, please don't break your foot. <laughs> don't break your toe. And, you know, he didn't break it, but I don't like the sound of a strain because, you know, every time there's a strain, it feels like someone's out longer. Also, the it's the planting foot for both mm -hmm. throwing and swinging, so that doesn't help. Right. Um, they, by the way, are padding the right field wall at Chavez Ravine now like they are redoing it uh so I mean that didn't make a difference he kicked the floor like it <laughs> doesn't make any difference uh or click kick the ground I shouldn't say the floor it's outside yeah. but um yeah so the quarters are shot again like you said no break that's good news again that that would have been the worst case scenario had he broke it because that would have been what a month and a half. at least yeah breaking yeah. a toe is i broke a toe on my foot in high school and i was not right for probably about a month and a half yeah month and a yeah. half yeah so that's the good news bad news yes it takes an aisle stint he thought he might avoid it but clearly is not the reigning american league player of the month he was so good clearly yeah. so good uh both defensively and offensively so this is i mean it's no it's obvious this is this is a massive blow yeah. roster move wise we don't know what they're going to do yet they did not announce that after the game on tuesday night stacy the only ones that really make sense uh they could either call up franchi or oswald peraza yes i'm hoping it's oswald hopefully after all the talk we had about him i would love it for it to be him but i feel like it's going to be franchi because that just feels like something the yankees would do Probably going to be Franchi. I'd imagine it's Franchi just because obviously Oswald doesn't play the outfield and uh, they just want another outfield. They'll make do just fine on the infield. They got everybody on the infield right now, so it doesn't make much sense to have Oswald up, but that could be something. Mm -hmm. uh, but I imagine it's going to be Franchi. It's not going to be Florial because they had to make a 40 man move, which Florial is not on the 40 man. Uh, remember, they are at 46 before these two moves with uh, six 60 day ILs. Um, yeah, so it's a lot right now. It's a lot right now. So uh, they would have to make a 40 man move if they wanted to call anybody else up, uh, like a Cole Calhoun or something like that. They would have to DFA somebody or put somebody on the 60 which none of these guys are going to be on the 60 because they already put one on there uh, yeah. in Carlos Rodon. So that's, that's the status of that. I imagine it's Franchi. 
Uh, I would like for it to be Oswald, but I don't see that realistically happening. The other uh, news here as well, Stacy, news that we anticipated. Nesta Cortez is also going uh, back onto the injured list. It's coming from Max Goodman. Of course, many multiple reporters saying this, but this one from Max Goodman. Uh, he has a shoulder strain and won't throw for the next two weeks, Aaron Boone said. They'll reevaluate in 10 days. He also received a cortisone injection for that injury. Stacy, we talked about it when it happened. There's some more wrinkles to it we're going to get to in a second, but just your thoughts on Nestor Cortez's latest venture. When it rains, it pours. <laughs> like, I mean, every time they get people back, someone else gets hurt. It's, it's when I said that this team was similar to 2019, I really didn't want them to continue to be like 2019 with all these injuries piling up. So can the baseball gods please stop because i've had enough it's it's not even mid-june and i'm tired of this it's just yeah. holy cow it's unbelievable that this team is doing as well as it's doing with all of this <laughs> happening to them it's crazy yeah it's, it is crazy that they've been able to sustain <laughs> this amount of success with these this many guys down it makes basically no sense it, it really does uh the roster move here is Randy Vasquez is going to start on Wednesday. Stacy, this is weird to me hmm. because Vasquez made his debut two turns of the rotation ago. He pitched on June 2nd against the Lehigh Valley AAA affiliate of the Phillies. Brito pitched on June 1st against Lehigh Valley. Of course, Brito or Vasquez were the two 40 man spots that made the most sense to be called up here, but they went with Vasquez. Hmm. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know if they just want new, like new blood, or maybe they think Brito would be better served staying down in AAA and giving Vasquez another chance. Maybe they saw something from him that first start because it wasn't awful, you know? Um, so maybe that's it. Maybe they just want to give him a chance and have Brito work on some stuff, maybe down in AAA more before they bring him back up possibly um you know we all found this out because vasquez posted on his instagram stories that he was outside yankee stadium before the game on uh tuesday so i mean good for him he gets this chance that's really cool for him and again i re maybe it's just they want brito to have more time in triple a well that's the weird thing brito has significantly more time than randy vasquez in triple a which doesn't yeah. make any sense vasquez was there this year brito was there a good chunk of last year <laughs> And then, of course, has been in the majors for the majority of this year. So this one was very confusing to me. I, and that's why I immediately went like, oh, when did Brito last pitch? I was like, well, he had an, has an extra day of rest over Randy Vasquez. Do you think this is permanent? Do you think the Yankees are going to stick with Vasquez over Brito despite or in spite or however this start goes? I don't know. I mean, it's maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll alternate them for as long as they need someone in the rotation i mean it could be that sort of a situation where they have one guy come up for a little bit and then send someone down and i don't know because it, i mean it really depends on how long cortez is actually out for because this could be a bad thing shoulders are no bueno <laughs> well like, especially considering reevaluate in 10 days yeah that's minimum 15 day right yeah he's gonna be gone for a while yeah so that leads me to this stacy I'm calling for a trade. The mm. Yankees cannot sustain this again. No. They just can't. No. Because no one's coming back. Last time, uh, you know, Nestor wasn't pitching well, and you're going, uh, it's like, okay, well, Sevy's coming back. Sevy's back now. Yeah. <laughs> the Yankees have to make a move, right? There's If they want to be contenders in the AL East, they cannot continue to weather the storm. It's June. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, I don't who is out there that they can trade for, though. Like, we would really have to examine this because, like, I'm trying to think of teams that are not great that have someone that maybe they can unload. But I can you think of anyone? Because I can't. I mean, off not off the head. top. We'll, yeah. well, maybe we'll explore that in a future episode yeah. here. Uh, as we've talked about, the Yankees have a couple of off days coming up, which obviously is going to help out the cause a little bit. They'll have uh two off days next could, week could have... that be a reason why they're doing things because i mean they have so many off days in june it's kind of strange yeah. well then I they probably i more so would have seen them call up a reliever then or something 
Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you, you know, call the might, crook or something. Yeah, this might not be the only move. Like we might see Vasquez for one game and then we might see something yeah. else happen depending on what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. again, I, maybe we'll examine again a trade targets here. But I think the Yankees need to do something. If they want to contend this year, they can't keep doing this. They just can't sustain. It's extremely unsustainable. Yeah. Like it's one thing to lose a bunch of position players because in 2019, it was mostly position players that were injured, maybe like a couple of bullpen arms and stuff, but it wasn't like three to four fifths of the rotation being injured. Cause that's, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's a big problem. Any other team when's Rodon who... coming, right? When's Rodon? Right. You know, you know, Montas. Oh, okay. 14 weeks. Great. <laughs> See yeah. you in September. And then, when he comes, like, yeah. <laughs> and when he comes back in September, you don't know what you're getting out of him. So yeah, it's, yeah. this is a mess. And by then it might be already too late. Right. Right. I think the Yankees got to make a move here, man. I'm calling for it. Uh, let us know how you're feeling about these two injuries. I'm sure you're feeling great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let us know while you're down in the comment section here on YouTube. Drop your questions for Fan Mail Friday if you're new here. Of course, we answer your Fan Mail questions every Friday on Locked on, Yan- Locked on Yankees. Every day is already know that. You can catch the White Sox series, which continues tonight on Sirius XM. When we come back, we're going to talk about Game 1. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnMLB. Back now on Locked On Yankees. Hey, thanks so much for making us your first listen of the day every single day to the everydayers out there. Coming up tomorrow, John Brophy of Pinstripe Prospects who covers the Yankee system is going to be on tomorrow's show. We're going to talk about Jared Cerna. Remember on our Miners Monday segments, we ask about prospects that you want to be covered. And of course, a lot of you said Jared Cerna. So we're going to have a guy who's talked to him, met him and watched him play. Come on the show to tell us a little bit about this young Mexican infielder in the Yankee system down with Tampa. That's coming up tomorrow. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Stacy Yankees almost no hit last night. Looked like it was going to go that way for a long time. Lucas Giolito, six no hit innings with seven K's and three walks. What an outing. Yeah, I was annoyed. I like Lucas Giolito. I actually love Lucas Giolito. I saw him on ESPN during an all-star game three or four years ago for probably four years ago, right? Cause three years ago it was COVID um, talking about pitching. He loves talking about pitching. He's one of those pitchers who will talk to you for hours about it. And I was enthralled with him. I was just like, wow, he's so awesome. And when I think about people that I want the Yankees to trade for, <laughs> if the, if the white Sox were doing worse, I would want the Yankees to get Lucas Giolito. Cause I just think he's great. And I mean, good for him for having such a great outing, but why against the Yankees, Lucas, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's had a roller coaster of a year, just like many on that staff, many on that roster. Yeah, uh, it's been a very strange season. And that's what we said in our preview yesterday, Stace, uh, of going, I don't know what you're going to get out of Lucas Giolito. And, and you don't know what you're going to get out of Clark Schmidt, to be fair, either. Like, you, you just <laughs> don't really know uh, what these guys are going to be doing right now. Uh, and you just don't have any clue what the identity of this White Sox team is. Yeah, I was actually shocked when um, I saw that Tim Anderson didn't have any home runs. I know he's not like a a big home run hitter, but to have none at this point in the season, I was kind of shocked about that. And I'm sure that, you know, that's not helping them either. But yeah, very up and down for them in an AL Central division that isn't, it's not like Minnesota's running away with it. So, you know, if they just get a little better, they would have a chance in that division. 
or not even just get a little better, just play the way they're supposed to play. Right. And it's been like we said in the preview, it's been like this for over a year now, where in 2022, they were expecting them to win 93. I saw projections of 96 and they were 81 and 81. So this is more than a season of them not playing up to the way they're supposed to play. But of course, they won tonight because that's how baseball works. (laughs) Yeah. Three, two final Clark Schmidt. You got to be encouraged with his last couple of outings, right? He did give up three on a pair of homers from Sebi Zavala. But uh, I mean, six innings, three earned. Take six it, right? innings, six innings, three earned. That's a quality start. I mean, I'm not happy about the two home runs, but six innings. Just think of it. Clark Schmidt made it to six innings. That's good for him. So we'll look at the positive. It's encouraging. Yeah, it, like, like last three starts. Yeah. Getting Playing better. A better. Mm-hmm. Playing a lot better. Uh, and at least uh, entering the conversation if there weren't injuries to kind of stick around here in the rotation ended up breaking up that no hitter in the bottom of the seventh the single big air quotes <laughs> to our auto uh, our audio listeners that ball should have never fallen now uh, ever but then trevino ended up singling to right and scored the run so it didn't it disappeared rather quickly but uh yeah that ball should have never dropped yeah, that was uh, that I, I joked that they lost it in the smoke at Yankee Stadium, but that was just a bad miscommunication by the by the outfielders. Um, but that was some sight at Yankee Stadium with the smoke and the air and everything else that was happening. And I still can't believe they played that game with the way the <laughs> the air quality yeah. is here in New York. It's bad. It's really yeah, bad. The uh, the rail riders were smoked out uh, in Scranton, Wilkesbury, which is if you don't know, about two hours away. From the Bronx. Uh, so, yeah, that happened. I was texting with Adam Marco, who's been on the show before. He's the the main voice of the Rail Riders there. And he was like, first time that's ever happened. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, yeah, it happens here sometimes. Well, we uh, were talk- weren't we talking about the fact that everything was reversed? You were cold in California. We were too hot in New York. <laughs> and now we're having wildfire fire smoke bothering us in New York. It's like, what yeah. is happening? <laughs> yeah, of course, we send all our love to the to our friends north of the border, man. That's, uh, again... It's California scary. here, so it's 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 awful. I I, ugh. Yeah. I hate dealing with it. It's terrible. Um, but that's that's the world. It's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, back to baseball. Josh Donaldson, man, he had a great game. He really did. Rob Don Juvon uh, of a hit there in the infield. That was ridiculous. I mean, you know, and I say this about him all the time. He may not have hit last year, but he was really good defensively. And you know, I always joke that he's old because he's baseball old, but he still moves really well in the field. And that play was amazing. I mean, kudos yeah. to him. It was great. Shades of Baltimore Orioles, Man- Manny Machado. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what it yeah, reminded maybe, me of. Maybe, yeah. But then you also go, man, Manny was like two more steps in foul territory when he made that play. Yeah. Just an absolute all-time great play. Um, then he also didn't have his hat on for another play. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. That was bizarre. What are you looking at, Josh? You must have been looking at some scouting something. Something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Ended up homering, too. Yeah, you know, um, he comes back, he homers twice in the first game that he's back in in L.A., and he homers on Tuesday. And again, having him back in the lineup is actually, you know, he worked a walk. I mean, he's he's doing things. It's just it would be great if the rest of the lineup would do things when Josh Donaldson does things. Yeah, just disappeared <laughs> uh, on Tuesday night. So, I mean. In the smoke. <laughs> in the smoke, yeah. <laughs> Mash. The world turned upside down. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre that you guys are doing. I didn't even realize there was anything going on. And then I turned on the game and I was like, man, it's kind of smoky. Like, what's going on? I thought it was like a haze or something. Yeah. Uh, And then I ended up looking it up. Wait, what? Yeah. You know, that's how it goes sometimes. I I can't know everything. I was just thinking too, by the way, I I wanted to make this quick point about when we're talking about the first segment with with Judge Hurt. At least Stan's back this time. True. True. At least yeah. they got one big also, boy in the lineup. <laughs> yeah. I also completely forgot about Harrison Bader. Oh yeah, that's right. He's gone too. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many there's, there's so many injuries. It's hard. It's, it's, really, it's hard to keep track. We, I think we, need now, that, we, we need that sign again. Zero days since the last Yankees yes. injury. I think what we're gonna do is like on the YouTube version of the show at the bottom, we'll just have like here are all the players who are hurt, just so you don't forget either. We should make a ticker. Let us know if you want us to make a ticker of all the injured players. Why are you so you... Doing that? Oh, sorry, no, that's that's more work, okay, yeah, more that's work more, for me. Yeah, that's more work for Steve. Sorry. Okay, don't do that. 
<laughs> oh boy, you gotta laugh, other otherwise you'll cry. Hey, questions, drop them in the comment section here on YouTube. You know the draw. I say it a thousand times an episode. You know what else I say a thousand times? You can listen on SiriusXM. You already know that. You guys are SiriusXM subscribers already. Anyway, uh, coming up, let's talk about game number two. Randy Vasquez on the mound. Let's talk about it. This episode is brought to you by one of our favorite new sponsors, Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is the best place to buy men's shorts and pants that come in with a built-in liner. I got a couple of pairs of Bird Dogs myself, and honestly, I really like them. I've been wearing them. I mean, it hasn't been hot, but I still want to wear my Bird Dogs. That should tell you everything here on the West Coast. I just already know it's going to be my look of the summer, so you should definitely get some yourself. They're comfortable, versatile, and cheaper than other reputable brands. And Locked On Yankees listeners have the opportunity to get some free stuff when you place an order at birddogs.com. They have tons of different styles and fits to choose from, so you're definitely going to find something that's going to be right for you. You can go to birddogs.com slash MLB, enter the promo code LOCKEDONMLB, and they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order. I use it all the time. So does Stacy. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB and use the promo code locked on MLB. Oh, yeah. And buy some shorts too. Back here on Locked On Yankees, final segment here for our Wednesday show. Stacy, pitching matchup for game number two. As mentioned, this was Nestor's spot. It is now going to be Randy Vasquez versus Lance Lynn. Another wild card matchup. Yes, another one where you don't know what's going to happen, especially Lance Lynn. He's been very, he's been mostly down this year, four and six, ERA up above six. But he's one of those guys that can come into a game against the Yankees with numbers like that and shut them down because I've seen him do it before. So don't look at his numbers and think, oh, the Yankees will hit him because <laughs> you never know. Um, he got he got lit up last time, yeah. like lit up by the Angels. Four innings, eight hits, eight earned, three bombs. Uh, Shohei went deep on him. Pair of walks, four Ks. That was back on the thirty first of May. He he pitched terribly. And you know what's weird, Stacy, is like he didn't pitch great in the World Baseball Classic, right. but he had like one like that one outing where you're just like, whoa, oh yeah, Lance Lynn. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that's just kind of summarizes Lance Lynn is every now and then you go, oh, whoa, yeah, Lance Lynn. Yeah, it, it, that's true. Yeah, he is that type of pitcher a lot of times. Um, and then Randy Vasquez, um, he had that one start that he made, his debut, and it wasn't bad. You know, it, 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 I mean, it could have gone better, but it wasn't bad for his first time in the majors. And like we said in the first segment, you know, he might be up for one start. He might be up for a couple starts. We don't know what the Yankees are going to do with him because again, you know, we were kind of surprised it wasn't burrito, but we'll see how he does. He pitched against Lehigh Valley on June 2nd, four and two thirds, four runs on seven hits, gave up a home run, three walks, five Ks. So. Yeah. That was an interesting series between uh, Scranton Wilkesbury and Lehigh Valley. There was a couple of those games that were just, I mean, they were just, downpours of runs and and that ballpark coca-cola park in allentown is plays really big too so to see uh those kinds of numbers uh, offensively i mean there's a lot of like gap to gap space but balls don't really leave the yard there unless you really get them mm. um also good euros in right field by the way if you ever make your way out to coca-cola park i'm a Ooh. big i'm a big lamb guy do you like lamb I, i'm greek <laughs> Well, I don't know. I grew up with it. Yes. Okay, yeah. I, I love lamb. And thank the you lamb's for saying not really... it correctly, by the way. I, I asked on a Twitter poll like a couple months ago, by the way, like, how do you say it? I was just not like, how do you say it? I know how you say it, but like, how do you say it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> lamb, not really in the uh, Mexican diet. So yeah, you know, yeah. A newer venture for me. Yeah. I grew up on lamb pretty much even i mean i'm half greek i'm not fully greek mom's irish italian but she would make lamb chops and stuff but lamb yeah during uh greek easter and all these other holidays that we did like christmas eve we did greek we did christmas eve with our greek side of the family so we'd have more greek food on that holiday and then did the other holidays with the irish italian side so yeah uh lots of different food options for me really cool actually um I'm going to try and make game two preview, by the way. I know. I'm going to try and make moussaka. Hey, Chicago has a really good Greek town, by the way. Like, 
people always tell me when you go to Chicago, you need to go to Greek town. And I always tell them I'm afraid to, because even though my name is very Greek, I don't speak the language and restaurant owners get very mad at me when I put my debit card down and they start to speak to me. And I'm like, Mm -mm, mm -mm. nope, blame my dad. Sorry. (laughs) While while we're on this topic, by the way, since I have unlimited access to a bunch of Yankees fans and New Yorkers, as a Mexican myself, <laughs> in the world, do you guys eat Mexican food in New York City? Every time I'm there, I can't find any. That's good for me. So drop drop some restaurant wrecks whenever I'm in New York again. Because <laughs> like we were there a couple of years ago. My sister used to live in, in Manhattan. And we went there for, for Christmas one year. And we we're just trying to find some tamales for Christmas. We couldn't find any good tamales, man. I was, I was dying. I was we actually have a really good Mexican place in my s- small dinky town here in Rockland County. And... We didn't think it was going to last because of the way my town is. And it's been open for six years and everyone loves it. They actually had to open a bigger restaurant because they were getting so much business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did find one in Jersey, though. I will say that they had some some good food in Jersey uh, just across the river. I was staying there a couple of times ago. I was there and I found some (laughs) some good Mexican food. I was like, finally. Uh, Anyway. (laughs) Anyway, Lance Lynn, Randy Vasquez, that's the pitching matchup uh, for game two. We'll see. Again, we're, we're still waiting on this roster move yeah. for uh, for Judge. We know, again, obviously, what the roster move is for Nestor because they have to name a starter. Should, but, we, bet? Uh, Should we bet it's going to be Franchi? Oh, no, it's Franchi. Come on, yeah. dude. It's Franchi. I'm just, you know, humoring the argument there that it's Oswald, but it's Franchi. That's the obvious. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments, by the way, who would you rather have? Do you think Franchi deserves to come back or do you, would you just like, come on, bring up Oswald. We saw some comments on our Oswald episode that were like, come on, man, it's time. Uh, I think he's a very, very intriguing trade piece. If you're trying to get another starter here, which the Yankees kind of need. Yeah. Might have to do anyway. Uh, you can catch the white Sox series. You can catch game two tonight. Sirius XM. So long as the air quality is at least good enough uh, coming up on Thursday show. As we mentioned, Jared Serna, That's the name we're going to be talking about, a young prospect playing with the Tampa Tarpons right now. We're going to tell you everything you need to know with one of the big members of Pinstripe Prospects. That's coming up tomorrow, so make sure to hit subscribe, and you don't have to miss it. It's right there for you. That's going to do it for today's episode of Lockdown Yankees and Food Recommendation Talk. I'm Steve Granato. (laughs) And I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow. 